Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome you all back to another exciting episode of Human Humane Architecture, broadcasting live here from our urban paradise of Honolulu, Hawaii. And today we're going to follow up with one of our favorite guests from the recent past, <laughs> that's Richard Lowe. Good to have you back on the show, Rich. Thank you, Martin. Much appreciated. And last time, hopefully people remember, and if not, go back and revisit the previous show. You were sharing your exciting experience about how you actually came here to be part of the Warnicke team about the planning uh, around the Capitol. Right, but, that's true. But now we want to know what happened following that. And so I, I got a sort of an, an appetizer of that, if we can get the picture one up here, when you were uh, with us at Docomomo and gave a talk story. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the title of the show, and you see at the bottom right here, we call this show the, the, um, the Ward's Wonder World. And, and why mm -hmm. is that, Rich? Well, the Ward family is one of the most interesting families I've ever thought about. I didn't, I worked after I left, after Warnicke left Honolulu following their work, mm -hmm. I went to work for Victoria Ward itself. And I, I didn't really appreciate the complexity and, and amazing facts about that family. Mm -hmm. But she, Victoria Ward herself, I think of her as a kind of Margaret Thatcher of Hawaii. Awesome. I'm not sure whether that's well, appropriate or not. Maybe while you talk, let's bring up picture three, jump over one picture and bring up picture three, and then we can look at her here, how, yeah. she, how she looked, you know? Well, you can see that as a child and as a grown-up and as an older lady, mm -hmm. she had that same gaze, that, that powerful Yeah feel for moving forward and being practical, which she had to do mm -hmm. because her husband died mm -hmm. very young. Uh-huh. And let's look, let's jump to the next slide and see the area she was sort of overseeing. And next slide, please. Uh, the next one for. So that's the area, right, we're sort of talking about. And this is an old map from, as it says, 1884, right? Yes, yes where you see that long pond mm -hmm. in the, almost the middle of the picture, that was in, on their home place. Mm -hmm. They decided to move what is, was then called the outskirts of town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, is the very middle of town. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so. And, and let's take a look how that, how that sort of, you know, appeared, next picture here because it wasn't urbanized yet. It was pretty much the countryside, as you explained, and very lush, sort of in the jungle, and that was the house, right? That was their, that was their house. It, 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 may I divert for a second? I'll try to be oh, quick. Of course. Um, that house and Iolani Palace mm -hmm. were designed by the same architect, uh -huh. built by the same contractor wow. at the same time. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yeah. And, but there was something tragic when they moved in. Something happened, Brian. Curtis Ward died within a year of moving in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there were many kids, right? And we many go to the kids. next slide, please. Before they we moved here, they had a house called they called Dixie down near the waterfront. Uh huh. And in that house, where all, all these seven daughters were created. Wow. <laughs> But regardless, or maybe because they were very social and, you know, you would casually call it throwing parties. And let's look at that at the next slide, please, here. And, and hosting and being very sort of cosmopolitan, had people over from, you know, all over the world and, you know, places and very. races and all of that, right? <laughs> very inclusive. <laughs> well, they spoke, uh, they spoke uh, excellent Hawaiian mm -hmm. all their lives. Mm -hmm. When she was a child, that's what they spoke mostly. But also, she was well well educated and mm -hmm. spoke perfect English as well. Yeah. And they were very close to the royal family mm -hmm. of Hawaii, mm -hmm. very close to Queen Liliuokalani. Yeah. Very good friend of hers, and they had this. This is here you are, almost a coat and tie, yeah. sitting on the ground for yeah. a luau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an amazing picture. <laughs> but but then again, they were like really, as you call it, very forward-thinking and innovative, you would call it these days, right? So they were like, 
you know, this looks pretty um, casual, obviously, and, and very sort of um, traditional, I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. But, but mm -hmm. then, you know, you were brought in as, as a Howley, respectfully call you that, right, and myself, <laughs> and that's how they call that's, us. That's what I am. And yeah, and they brought us in to bring innovation, right? So they bring the best of our world, which is the Western civilization. And let's go to the next slide and see how that sort of was laid out and where that area was, mm -hmm. right? That's this picture here. This well, is if I the, had a long finger, I'd point out yeah. where Old Plantation is on that, but we'll see that. Mm -hmm. But this is the Victoria Ward uh, purchase. Mm -hmm. Victoria and Curtis purchased that entire, it was about 65 acres, uh -huh. more or less, mm -hmm. uh, on, called the Sea Lands. Mm -hmm. And they saw it from the cupola of their house. All right. And they thought, maybe we ought to own that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Why they, not? Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> and they bought it. Wow. Yeah. And, and then, you know, developing that was very forward thinking. And if we go to the next slide, you know, one of the masterpieces of the development we still have, right? And this is this one here. Yeah. Well, you can see that the, the, that 40 acres, that orangey, goldy looking place, mm -hmm. that was, uh, oh, it became Old Plantation, and that was the name of their house. Yeah. And then it was bought uh, just about when the last of the daughters died. Mm -hmm. They sold it to the city. Yeah. I think $2 million, although I don't want to be quoted on that because I'm not absolutely certain. Yeah. That was a lot of money yeah, at well, one time. Yeah, yeah. But you can, the concert hall now, yeah. the exhibition hall and the arena mm -hmm. fill that out. Yeah, so, and, and we will revisit that in a little bit, but let's move on to yeah. get a little bigger picture. Next slide, please. About, yeah, I mean, what else were they thinking? And here, you know, you can, this is mid 70s to mid 80s, as, as you sort of, you know, stated here. And this, this looks pretty um, familiar to us, right? Because it's pretty much, I mean, by the way, this area is now more than less the Kakaako area, right? I mean, well, or, it, or, or being close to it. Right? Close to, uh, from, from the left of this picture, mm -hmm. some of that land is, and still is Victoria Ward Limited, mm -hmm. but uh, l little commercial spots and this and that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the ward now, the Ward Village, and that they're following the plan. This plan, mm -hmm. this was published in 1967. Yeah, takes a while to develop uh -huh. things. Yeah. And maybe let's, uh, please, uh, Rob, can you go just briefly over 11 and 12 and 13 and while you talk about it, and you basically said, that's what we planners do. You kindly, you know, casually said, you know, yeah. we look at zoning, we look at circulation, accessibility, we look at sort of time frames. The next picture, you know, 12 is looking like, you know, we're not gonna build this all at once, you know, there are time frame windows and it grows mm -hmm. well, sort this of is organically, about, right? This is about the leases at, yeah. the, at the time we did the, the plan mm -hmm. and what could, where something could be built soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what couldn't be built soon. Yeah, very strategically laying out. Yeah. But, but the next slide here is sort of, again, part of a vision that's and this is where we're deviating away from the Docomomo part because the Docomomo part basically made you think about, hey, I got to reconnect to an old buddy of mine who was involved with you. And the next slide, please. And this is a gentleman that I had been wanting to have on the show at least four times, but in his way being so humble, he said, basically, you're on your own. You can do this. You don't need me. And so here are four <laughs> of the shows we did. And this is your old friend, Steve Au. Right, right. And this is just you recently reconnecting, and, and yep. here you are. And, and that made you remember sort of his very ambitious visions uh, as far as residential high-rises in this area. It, it certainly did, yeah. And so let's move on to the next slide and, and take a look at, at that vision as a larger. And you tell us a little bit about the nature, literally and figuratively, of these... Um, of these, I, I call them skinny towers because they're rather small in footprint and they're rather tall, right? They are, they are, they're, they are. So let's talk about their nature. And the next picture here is um, our friend Bundit, you know, who uh, insisted that we 
spend some time talking about the intricacy and the delicacy of the composition in, in sort of in plan slash planning, right? And the little diagram at the top, that's what people don't do these days anymore, take into account Malcolm Mackay, you know, the breeze, not just the view. Today, everything is about the view and nothing else. And that's why mm -hmm. buildings are positioned the wrong way in many, many ways. But this is so elegantly composed, not just sort of in a, in a technocratic way or a technical way, but this is sort of an all-encompassing, yeah, composition, right? Yeah, this is the site plan, and, and Steve designed the whole set of two towers uh -huh. as a possible first project for the Victoria Ward mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. And you were next picture, take, we take a look at one of these uh, floor plans here, and, mm -hmm. and, and you said, you know, it's, uh, it has a little sibling in the neighborhood, right? Which one is that you That's referred? 1350, mm -hmm. designed by Minoru Yamasaki. Exactly. For Dilko was the developer of that building. Exactly, and and we did a show about that with Joey Valenti, who is a resident. And we will allude to that a little later. But you know, the reason why you're referring to that is that they're very similar sort of ways of thinking and and making as not making them all glass towers, which then end up being microwaves. You know, that get pounded by the sun. <laughs> These are basically like organisms who basically are self-shading themselves and the breeze is going through and there is large lanai is what you said. So they were more organic in nature, right? Yeah, they're a little, from some, some people might think they're old fashioned and the kitchen is a room mm -hmm. <laughs> as opposed to being in the living room. I, I know. <laughs> this is so cool because it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, things happen in circles, right? So now like the, the open kitchen block is the cool thing, almost like the standard. But if we think about it, you know, when you cook, you got all that smell everywhere all over the yeah. place. So here they mostly have these folding doors so you can either separate them, you know, to keep that smell, you know, contained or you can yep. open them up and, and way more sort of um, multifunctional, yeah. right? And the bedrooms, like 1350, you can see are minimally fenestrated. Yeah. That's kind of a fancy yeah. word. No, it's perfect. I, don't I use love that it. very often. Uh, me too. Yeah, thank you. But, but <laughs> I mean, in this, in this building, you, you don't have, you're not, if you get up naked at, at five in the afternoon yeah, from a yeah, map, yeah. you're not going to be seen. Yeah. And we, we should be all more or less naked because we're in the tropics and we can afford to be naked, right? And not sure. where we both come from, where you freeze your butt off, right? When it's right. cold. So we can, we can do that. And so I, I love that sort of way of you think and you, you know, they're easy breezy and they're easy going, you know, and so very, very sort of exotically tropical in, in nature. And, and let's zoom out and let's look, have two of these wonderful uh, hand-drawn perspective next slide here. This is how they would then sort of be, once again, almost like sort of man-made trees in that sort of landscape, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, we're looking at the towers from uh, Ala Moana. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, I think I find them, I'm, I'm prejudiced, however, I find them very beautiful. Yeah, no, I, I do too. I'm less prejudiced and I agree with you, you know. <laughs> and I think they're like, like the times and like you guys, they were so elegantly eloquent and eloquently elegant at the same time. They weren't like these days, you know, I want to be a superstar. You know, it's all about me that goes up to national politics and you know, that sort of narcissist syndrome. Yes. They were very humble personalities. They wanted to be a backdrop and, yeah. you know, being very good and solid, but not be in the forefront. So they were like That's not true. trying to compete with what's most beautiful about Hawaii is the natural environment, right? So mm -hmm. the mountains mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So the these ward. tried to be, you know, in balance with that and not compete so much. Yeah. Well, the, the wards themselves were on the, they weren't shy, Yeah. but they were, they were not outwardly aggressive yeah. at all. Yeah, and and you made a reference to developers these days and, and back in the day. Yeah, right? well, they chose not to go ahead with this project, maybe, yeah. maybe unfortunately, because yeah. they didn't have the, that, that uh, tremendous drive that, you know, people like uh, uh, Stanford Carr, yeah. and they can undertake something and just 
yeah. ram it through. And mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I admire them for that and yeah, the ability. But, but to sometimes do that. you would you would you would wish they would have the same noblesse and you know nobility and then humbleness <laughs> and and I'm just like and and. And inclusiveness, by the way, because the next slide here, which we're really struggling, and, and this is just another view that basically yeah. shows also how the we're now we're almost you know always like saying you know and, and Howard uses and you know is big times branding the streetscapes and said oh we got restaurants and we got trees, but we were just revisiting the the term um, you know uh, canopy cover. Mm -hmm. which which is about like how much percentage of foliage you have leaves on trees and we're actually way behind we in in a 12 month growing cycle environment we have like in the 20s and some cities were which we know on the mainland where the climate isn't as privileged has like in the 30s or something so i think there is an initiative a public initiative to bump up that canopy cover right but but this is showing here so. that it's it's not just about the, the green uh, vegetation, but it's about sort of um, built vegetation and, and street furniture and planters and surfaces and, and you know, a blend of a natural and an, 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 an artificial environment. They're in harmony and, and exciting, you know, and an exciting creation of both mankind and nature. Yeah, well, this, this was the concourse Mm -hmm. through which you would enter the building yeah, and yeah. enter the garage. Mm -hmm. But there also were, were little shops yeah. along that concourse. So it was yeah. humanized in, in, in that sense. Oh, and taking up on that term, which is a brilliant one, gets to go to the next slide, because here's sort of the ratio of like occupancy mm -hmm. from a social point of view. So humanized, this is what we're struggling in, like the Stanford cars and the other developers. How can we make what they call affordable and at the same time being, you know, naturally ventilated, which they say it's a conflict, which I don't think it is, and we will see at the very end why I think this is not a conflict, right? But here they were shooting for, you know, a robust rental market, right? And then, you know, an offer, you know, that you have. The majority was intended to be, which we don't have now, the majority is ownership. And, you know, then the city is pushing now for a quota on, on affordable and renters, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. here, almost the renter seems to be the, the majority and the standards, and then there is some who can buy. So it was way more democratic and inclusive, right? And, and I mean, probably like the wards were, and certainly the royals, right? Because there was, to my understanding, but what do I know, no homelessness, because everyone was taken care of, right, in a, in a society. I, I would think so. It wasn't cut out I would think as so. yeah. we have it these days, right? So let's get the next slide and look at how that sort of presented itself, right? So uh, the towers obviously didn't happen because you said, you yeah. know, they didn't feel like so empowered yeah. to do that. So they right. ended up doing way more low rise. And as I like to add, which we see in the next couple of slides, also low key, in a respectable way, not being a bad. Well, thing. they were they were they were comfortable doing yeah. the two story warehouse type yeah. things, the the retail things and yeah. so forth, which you can see here. We can which, see where the awnings are. That was the ward warehouse. Yeah, and we actually yeah. take a f quick glimpse at that soon. But let's go back to the centerpiece, which is the Blaisdell uh, Center, and let's go to the next slide here, please, because if you guys remember the first opening slide today, which I repeated at the bottom here, this is Hewitt Docomomo, uh, you know, presenting that master plan with a masterpiece being the blaze. And at the same time, our host for the Docomomo talk stories is in charge of the redevelopment. So we have this sort of, you know, duality of the past and the future. And so here at the top right is, is what they're proposing. This is the, uh, Scandinavian firm Snowheda, together with WCIT here teaming up, and we let ourselves be surprised. We give it the benefit of doubt, but we, you know, DeSoto and I are not shy to share our opinions, you know, and, and we were saying, hey, maybe we could have kept that center, you know, jewel piece of the exhibit hall as well, and in, in a way with, and, and not trashing that and replacing it with something, you know, because it's a, 
it's a high bar to live up to because that was a was a very exquisite you know piece of tropical modernism so we wish them luck to to live up to that and we let ourselves be surprised because um, there are examples of things that aren't around anymore and let's move on to the next picture I think this is one of your favorite pieces uh, from from you know you said this was the first thing that actually got built from the master plan right? that's right this is the first thing that was built the garden office building mm -hmm. that was designed that was uh, Hogan and Chapman mm -hmm. architects yeah. that at that time were doing small things and eventually did bigger things and uh, that was had to be torn down in order to create land space mm -hmm. for the Hokua yeah, yeah. apartment which, building. Which we'll see later. And one of the bigger things they did later is at the top right, we did a show about the Pan Am building, which is one of yeah. the buildings. And at the bottom, That's very nice when show. we were doing the, uh, the UH uh, Manoa investigation, DeSoto discovered the courtyard theme, which then also is Bundit's you know, favorite thing, one of his favorite things. So this is maybe something to reconsider. That sort of courtyard theme is seemed to have been a very pleasant one, which we also had, um, if we could maybe jump over the next slide and get number 25 here, because this is uh, then uh, Ward Plaza, which doesn't really show in this picture, but it also was high on courtyards. Yes. In the middle of it. It had, it, it, if we'd had more pictures, for that, it would be interesting to see the whole complex. Yeah. And the audience has, because if they go back to that show that's referenced at the top right, we did a show about it so people can oh, see the courtyards, right. Right. right? Yeah. And you had a great uh, idea about how that one could have been kept and yet still being, you know, using the land in a way that, you know, more efficiently and effectively, right? I'm sort of sentimental about that building. I thought it was a very, very nice modern building. I am and too. I, I would have thought maybe the high, now that site was slated for high rise mm -hmm, mm -hmm. once the, the wards got beyond the two yeah. story yeah. limit yeah. in yeah. their heads. Uh, and I would have thought maybe the tower could have been built you know, as a part of that complex. And that becomes the podium, you said. And maybe yeah, we sacrifice yeah. the courtyard <laughs> to become the tower, but then the towers themselves is a, is sort of an interpretation of courtyards in the vertical, which is one of our dreams. And the other thing that's not there, another Steve Al, if we go back to the 24 now, is what warehouse, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah and Steve. again, people can revisit that. We did a show about that. And then... Let's go to 26 here, which is uh, basically, uh, which we already said, this is 1315 Ala Moana Boulevard, and I charge myself to go through all the original Hawaii Five O episodes, and I'm screenshotting them and archiving them. And this is basically celebrating 1350 uh, Ala Moana Boulevard, where around it, it was you know adjacent, uh, two-story, very low-rise development, and then it was the first, you know, large sort of beacons sticking out. And the next page is then showing, as you said, you know, which then happened many decades later, right? These yeah. towers were developed. Very much so. And, and yeah. we said, let's respectfully agree to disagree on this one here, because you said pretty much, well, these towers are sort of following the, which I call the Kevin Lynch, you know, basically towers in the park sort of theme. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying while they might do that on a planning level, on an architectural level, they're not following the genetic code of what we talked, the Steve Auer, you know, more natural organic towers and, th and its sibling, 1315 Alamoana Boulevard. These are way more invasively hermetic. I will, uh, to, to give them a little more credit, mm -hmm. I, I might say that they, they have so much space between the towers mm -hmm. that within those spaces, mm -hmm. they have extensive gardens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've been to dinner many times at the Naru mm -hmm, Tower mm -hmm. with friends of mine, mm -hmm. and we always eat out in the garden. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's not all... And, and you're just being so nice, and I'm inclined to say too nice, but there is no such thing, of course, Rich, <laughs> so I, I know. But I take you up on that sort of lush space in between the towers and yeah. come to the next slide, which is also our permanent background picture here, right? And this is sort of pushing that to the max. I mean, this is an additional picture that you were digging out, you know, when we were almost at the show, and you said, hey, can we please work this in? And I said, yeah. oh, this is super, because that makes us segue out of the show, because this is a vision here, again, of, uh, once again, you know, the towers in the park, right? And we're talking, Very, yeah. we're talking, uh, 
canopy cover, you know, this is probably 90%, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and this was this was a proposal of the state of Hawaii in 1982. Yeah. And in, in the report, Governor Ariyoshi is, yeah. is, writes the first page letter yeah, and yeah, so yeah, on. Yeah. And it was very interesting. I remember when that happened, mm -hmm. when they thought of having a way up in the air. Yeah, yeah. It, it, through all of Kaka, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ward, yeah, Bishop, yeah, Oha, yeah, yeah and so yeah. on. Uh, and how funny that we just heard this again recently, and we mentioned that in, a, in in several shows. You actually in your show, in your last show, and then we did as well. Because when Howard Hughes is pulling the Richard Meyer towel, they want to sort of re-naturalize that area, at least temporarily, until they. Rebuild and they want to reintroduce these skywalks, but we heard something through the great wine, you know, that it maybe it might not happen. So who knows? But let's follow that and, and go through the last couple of pictures here and and dream big, go to the next one here, how maybe you know we could sort of rejuvenate and renaturalize existing urban fabrics as Waikiki here we did with the emerging generation a couple of years ago and just saying, you know. The towers are private, so you know, talk the owners into you know taking off the glass and 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 bringing the green into the buildings. You know, let the from the podium let's grow up into the vertical and especially shade the so problematic western fenestrations, as you so perfectly use that term, <laughs> right? And make the buildings cooler, literally and figuratively. And then go through the next slide here. And, and you please comment on what you see. It's obviously our visionary work, but I would like to have sort of your feedback, how you think well, about Well, I, I thought things. it was very interesting, these, these ideas, which are concepts that really could be carried further, whether it, were, it would occur uh, within uh, War Village or not, they're, they're pretty strictly planned. Mm. But much of the city is gonna be redeveloped. We know that. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, we can see all the big towers popping up yeah, around yeah, the yeah, yeah, center. Yeah, yeah. And, and here we're seeing a different take, you know, because we can't afford like the the sort of the, the the low, you know, density within the footprints. We have to go higher density and maybe closer, so we can learn from the natural environment, from the jungles, and go to the, to the next couple of pictures and and rush through. These are sort of proposals for the individual sort of plants within that sort of jungle. Yeah, like, like a built, uh, you know, uh, man-made um, environment that's very much sort of boring from the natural environment. Although nature is nature and architecture is and bringing, architecture. bringing the landscape, I like this, bringing the landscape up into the yeah. buildings at yeah, different yeah. levels. Yeah, and we're 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 out of time, so we're going to conclude with the last slide and and thanking you again for having been with us again and you're going to be back you <laughs> promised you over much. the summer and you're going to bring your buddy Steve Owl and you know have a show and another Possibly. one with the Soto hopefully <laughs> and talk more about sort of what to learn from the past for the future and again if we can get the last 33 slide up here um, because uh, until then um, this is us having been out last week in the jungle in the real jungle with Bundit and our emerging generations yeah and so um, you know Next week, we will revisit um, an article that your previous, from the last show, your previous host, Timothy Schuler, uh, has written an article in the Flux magazine that's called The Brutes at the Beach, and it's looking into tropical modernism. So um, uh -huh. until, you know, that show, again, thank you so much for having been here. Uh, Rich, please come back, and I already told you, you have to come back, and so we agreed <laughs> on that one. Well, thank you, Martin. And thank you so much. And until then, you guys, please, uh, once again, bring back slot number 33 for one more time, because uh, until when you see you next week, please stay as Tarzani as rich. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>